بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله my dear respected uh, viewers we begin by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى for this opportunity for us to continue with our lessons in the commentary of Aqira Sanusiya and we pray that Allah bless us with the understanding and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this uh, lesson any a reason where our sins and your forgiven your prayers are answered and may Allah bless us any tawfiq and hidayah and bless us any iman and taqwa ameen ya rabbal alamin so uh, before any we enter into uh, our book there are a few things and yes usual and yeah, I would like any to mention as a summary of uh, our previous any lesson uh, in our last any lesson any the author any speaks any about the meaning any of uh, the divine it, that is in Arabic any we call it al uluhiyah so he was speaking any about the meaning of la ilaha illallah and uh, the meaning any of uh, al ilah and meaning any in terms any of its uh, definition in terms of mutabaqa and definition any in terms of mulazama so there are two things here that we mentioned any in our in our previous any class uh, and uh, some of you any un- ask uh, some any questions any in the whatsapp group pertaining any to the difference any in this uh, in these two terminologies and uh, uh, basically the author Al Imam Sanusi he mentioned the meaning in, in terms of is iltizam, dalalatul iltizam. Yani meaning uh, he mentioned, for example, in the matan, he said that the meaning of uluhia uh, is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not any in need of other than Him, is not any in need of other than Him. This is the meaning of al istighna, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala yani is not any in need of other than Him. Uh, the the one who comment the commenter that is Sheikh Said Fuda, he inserted the meaning of mutabaka. Yani the meaning any of mutabaka is basically the uh, the complete any meaning of a particular of a particular word. So, for example, any if a person asks what is any the meaning any of uluhiyah, that is any the divine uh, meaning any of the divine. So the meaning any is it is an entity that is wajibul wujud. Wajibul wujud, yani the existence any is necessary, and uh, he is any de- deserving any of the the one who is deserving any of worship. So two things here: one is uh, wajibul wujud, and the other one is istihqaqul ibadah. This is any the meaning based on mutabaka. Any based on mutabaka, any again, uh, it is any the the complete any meaning any of a word. But uh, the definition based on al uh, istilzam. Or iltizam, it is a derivation any of the uh, of the terminology. So when we say, uh, for example, any Allah subhanahu wa taala, He is wajibul wujud, and He is any deserving any of ibadah. So that entails that entails that He is not in need of other than Him. Uh, so Al Imam Sanusi, He He only mentioned the meaning of iltizam, and He did not men- mention the meaning of mutabaka. So some of you any ask what is the reason why there is a footnote uh, in the book any that you are having that speaks any about uh, the difference any between the meaning based on mutabaka meaning of iltizam. So basically what 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 I'm saying uh, what I'm trying to say uh, to explain about what is mentioned by Sheikh Said Fuda is that the fact that uh, since any the author since any the author did not any mention the meaning of mutabaka so he commented and he mention the mean uh, the meaning any of the meaning of mutabaka uh, together any with the meaning of iltizam as mentioned any by al imam al imam sanusi uh, and the reason why why he did this any because there are some critics any of al imam sanusi for the fact that he did not mention the terminology of uluhiyah based on mutabaka he only mentioned any based on iltizam whereas any usually usually any in mantiq what is important any is definition based on mutabaka because uh, definition any based on mutabaka and it speaks any about uh, the entity itself uh, or a particular thing in terms any of its uh, definition. Whereas uh, whereas uh, iltizam and it speaks any about the ruling that is derived any from that from that any definition. So basically, when we are speaking about a particular word, usually 
we bring forth any uh, what you call it the the complete any definition rather than the definition any that is derived. But here uh, the reason, of course, uh, based any on the footnote also that you have, uh, the reason uh, is that uh, Alima Musanusi to him for those any who have been <coughs> learning uh, what he mentioned any earlier in the beginning any of the chapters and so on to Alima Musanusi any when he wrote any Akhidah Sanusiya to him that the reader should have understood already. So there is any no need any for him any to mention again the definition any based on the mutabaka because all this thing about wajibul wujud and uh, Allah yastahiqul ibadah all this any many a times any has been mentioned any and many a times has been repeated in Aqidah Sanusiya when he spoke any about uh, al wujud when he spoke any about the attributes any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, all these things any have have been have been explained so he uh, only mentioned any dalalatul iltizam and the reason why he did so because and after this all this is coming all any is about dalalatul iltizam yani because he's going to speak any about that Allah yani, is not in need any of is not any in need any of other than other than him so this is any some uh, explanations based any on the questions uh, there, there is uh, there is a question any on this so i uh, what you call it? Take some time need to answer this thing. But at the end of the day, in order for you to understand what is the meaning of mutabaka and iltizam, you have any to study mantiq. You have to study mantiq. And if you don't study mantiq, any you might have difficulty any to understand what basically I am, I am saying. Any uh, you can read. You, you see, if you read in the translation, uh, the translator he translated the word mutabaka and iltizam. So ju- just ignore any about about this translation. But it's always an important. That's why I mentioned many a times. Is that what is important? Is that we memorize the Arabic terminologies and instead any of the English ones. So the English the English uh, translation is basically I need to assist. Type. Uh, so basically, uh, in our last lesson we mentioned any that. Uh, since any we have understood that Allah is wajibul wujud, that Allah any uh, what you call, is deserving any to be worshipped, that entails that He is not in need. So it is impossible. Basically, this is the thing any that we are go- going into. The point here is al istirna. This is where the author any will go deep any and explain any about the meaning of al istirna. So once any we have understood uh, that Allah subhanahu wa taala is Rani, Rani meaning any he is not any in need any of anything else, whereas everything is in need any of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So when we have un- when we have understood that Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, is al Rani, then he mentioned here, yani if you look. Uh, in your in your book, so now any we will enter into page one hundred and eighty five. One hundred and eighty five. Let us any go back, go back any to our kitab. So this is any the uh, what 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 we mentioned any uh, last week we spoke about mutabaka the meaning of the divinity of correspondence here is translated any mutabaka is translated as correspondence, whereas uh, it uh, is still zamin if you see here. Uh, it's translated as what? Concomitant. Concomitant. Ayo. So what? What is uh, important again? And as I mentioned, is we understand the meaning. And type. So our lesson today, ya yeah, jamaah, yani we will we will start any from page one hundred and eighty five. Based on this, okay. What what is any based any on this? Yani that Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, is not any uh, in need any of other than Him. That the fact that He is wajibul wujud, that He is deserving any of worship. The meaning any of La ilaha illallah is there is no one free from needing mustarni anything besides Him, while everything besides Allah the Exalted is in need of Him. Or it means there is no God whose existence is necessary and who deserves any to be worshipped besides any Allah. This is a meaning based on mutabaka. That's what we mentioned. So we have the meaning any based any of, of iltizam. That's what we mentioned here when it comes to istirna, and the meaning any of al mutabaka when it comes any to wajibul wujud and uh, deserving any to be worshipped. So both any meaning any stands. Both any meaning stands. And when we say La ilaha illallah, it can mean any there is no uh, uh, other existence that is wajib except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is deserving of worship. Uh, the dalil of uh, the meaning of iltizam, any we say that uh, there, is, there is no God any but Allah, any meaning that there is nothing any that is uh, what you call it, it uh, is uh, not in need except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope any it is clear inshallah. 
Then and he mentioned he is the true God whose existence is necessary and you deserve and it to be worship. This is based on Mutabaka. As for the points of doctrine that fall under this self-sufficiency. So now any he will speak any about self-sufficiency. In, in, uh, in Arabic and we call it Al-Istirna. It is intrinsic and eternal self-sufficiency any for him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, has no beginning and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, has no ending and he is not in need any of anything else. The sublime and majestic in which he is free of needing all besides him. His self-sufficiency implies that his existence and he is necessary. So now we, we will speak any about uh, al-wujud, al-wujud. So now any when we have understood that uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala is self uh, subsist uh, uh, self sufficient, that He is not in need any of anything else, that He is uh, al murni uh, al ghani, yani the one any who is not in need of other than Him, then yani uh, His existence any must be necessary. Because if the existence any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not necessary, meaning it is jais, it is possible. And when it is possible, any meaning, he, either, uh, uh, what you call, he has any a beginning or he has any an ending. If he has any a beginning, any meaning is he need any of an originator, any the one any who brings him into existence. If he has an ending, then that shows that he is contingent because the nature of contingency is that it accepts non-existence. So if God and he is uh, not is uh, the existence any of God and it's not necessary meaning his existence and is possible if his existence and is possible any meaning he is in need if he is any in need any meaning he is not God because God any cannot be uh, the, the the entity any that is in that is any in need because being any in need it uh, what you call it, uh, it it is any something any that make any a particular thing not divine because the moment any something any is in need then that shows uh, what you call it a, uh, a shortcoming, and it cannot any be divine because divinity speaks any about not any being any in need. So now any we read any what he mentioned, the sublime majestic in which he is free of needing all besides him. His self sufficiency implies that his existence is necessary. For if his existence were merely permissible, any ja is he would have needed an originator, muhdis, any the one and who brings him into existence. And that need negates self-sufficiency, and meaning he is in need. So he is not self-sufficient. It is impossible to negate self-sufficiency from him, the exalted, because it has been established and for him both rationally and textually. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Ya yuhannas antumul fukarau ilallah, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. That Allah mentioned in the Quran that Allah yani, is al-ghani. That Allah yani, is not in need. Yani, he is self-subsistent uh, or self-sufficient. Uh, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani is in need. As for the rational proof, it is the proof he presented for self-subsistence, qiyamuhu bin nafs. In our last time, yani, we spoke yani, about the proof yani, uh, of qiyamuhu, qiyamuhu yani, bin nafs, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, is not in need yani, of a locus or a place yani, to reside, and Allah yani, is not yani, in need yani, of something else yani, to specify him. Yani, something else yani, to specify him, and he is... Mukhasse. So we mentioned that if any Allah is in need any of a place or in need any of something else to specify his existence, then any he cannot be. Then meaning he is in need any of, he is in need any of that something. He is in need any of that something. So all these are the rational arguments any we have mentioned when we speak about Qiyamu Hubi Nafs. Any you can go back and you can read up. So there is no need any for us any to uh, go back any again and so on. So sometimes any when you learn any this kind of book, you have uh, to read up and revise any certain things so that inshallah ta'ala the information sticks any to you inshallah. Notice it said the meaning any of sublime. Yani it is the meaning of jalla. The word any jalla. Usually any we say Allahu Jalla Jalaluhu. The meaning any of jalla any is his divine any transcendence any above all imperfections. Any when we say jalla any meaning Allah any is free from all imperfections. The meaning any of majestic any azza is his unique any possession of all perfection. So jalla jal azza wa jal usually any we say Allahu azza wa jal. Yani azza any is majestic, jalla is sublime. Sublime any meaning free from all shortcomings and azza any meaning uh, possessing any all perfections. His self sufficiency necessitates his beginningness. Beginninglessness, uh, beginninglessness. Yani Allah cannot have a beginning. And if you say that Allah yani, is self uh, sufficient, He cannot have a beginning. If He has any a beginning, any meaning is in need of an originator. And it shows any that He is created. And this is impossible. 
In other words, it, ne it necessitates a negation of prior non-existence. Where were he be not uh, pre-eternal, he would have been contingent. Correct or not? And if he is not any pre-eternal, meaning he has a beginning. If he has a beginning, meaning he is a contingent. And were he contingent, he would not need. He would have needed an originator and muhdis, and he the one and who brings him into existence, and that negates self-sufficiency, meaning he is not self-sufficient and he is in need of something else to exist. Negating self-sufficiency is impossible because it has been affirmed both rationally and textually. So we say it is impossible that Allah has the beginning because if that is any the case, Allah is not any self-sufficient but Allah is self-sufficient and it is proven both rationally and also textually as what we mentioned. His self-sufficiency, all these are straightforward. I, I hope uh, it's clear inshallah all this for, for those and you have been following any uh, our lessons any so far. All these things and it's just a lot of the things. These things are basically a kind of a, a revision. There are some many repeated things, but it is mentioned any in 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 another way. Uh, basically, the author yani, is trying any to explain the part any of alistirna that Allah yani, is rani. So he said, itself uh, sufficiency necessitates his endlessness any al baqa. That Allah has no ending, which is an impression that indicates a negation of future non-existence. If it were, were possible for him to come into non-existence, his existence would only be permissible. Yani, ja izul wujud or mumkinul wujud. Yani, anything any has a, a, as an end is contingent and it cannot be necessary because necessary beings, necessary being, and he cannot accept non-existence. And he whose existence is permissible, yani mumkin or ja is, what happens? If the existence any is permissible, it can only be contingent. And that would entail that he is in need of an originator. Originator meaning muhdis, any the one who brings it into existence, which would in turn negate self-sufficiency. And the same thing. And you will negate self-sufficiency. And Allah and he is self-sufficient. Self -sufficient. So negating self-sufficiency from him, the exalted, is impossible because he has been affirmed for, for him, both rationally and textually. Inshallah, if you have any questions, any you can write down any as uh, as usual, any in the Seekers Nest uh, YouTube, uh, the the comment, uh, the comment and the section, and I, I will read it later. Inshallah, I will just any move on because all these things, any I believe as what I mentioned, easy to understand. I don't think uh, anyone any has any problem any understanding what is mentioned here because it is clear cut as what any we have mentioned in the previous any lessons. His self-sufficiency necessitates his absolute dissimilarity. So now he's speaking any about Mukhalafatul al Hawadis. So earlier we spoke about Al Wujud, we spoke about uh, Al Qidam, Al Baqa. So when we say Allah and is uh, Rani, Yani, he is Wajibul Wujud and he has no beginning, no ending. And likewise, he is dissimilar from all contingent beings. In other words, it negates any likeness between him and contingent beings in his entity, his attributes, and his actions. If he resemble anything from them, any contingent beings, he would have been contingent. So this is the thing. Yani if any a person says that Allah is like this, Allah yani, is like this particular substance. For example, Na'udz Billah. Or Allah yani, is like any this particular attribute of the contingent being. Or Allah yani, his actions and is like any the actions any of this contingent being. It means any that God is contingent. Because any having any similar similarity in terms any of essence or in terms any of attributes or actions. That would entail that he is, he is, uh, he is any contingent. If he resemble anything from them, contingent beings, he would have been contingent like them and thus in need of originator. So if he is contingent, meaning he is in need of originator, that's what we mentioned. Being in need negates self sufficiency, and the same thing again. And negating self sufficiency from Allah is impossible because it has been affirmed for him both rationally and textually. So I hope any it is clear inshallah. So the thing any about mukhalafatul hawadith and if we say Allah is dissimilar from contingent beings, if he were to be the same as contingent beings and he will be also be like contingent beings. And if he is a contingent being, any meaning he has a beginning. If he has a beginning and he is in need any of an originator. And if he is in need of originator, then he cannot be self sufficient. So being not self sufficient is impossible because we have established any proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah and also rational uh, proofs that Allah is self sufficient. So now when we go on to the next one, now when he say his self-sufficiency necessitates his self-subsistence. This is any the meaning any of qiyamuhu bin nafsihi. So once any we understand that Allah is self-sufficient, any it necessitates that Allah any is Allah is qa'imun bin nafsihi, which entails any being free from needing a locus or determiner. This is the meaning of qiyamun nafs. And last time we spoke about the meaning of qiyamun nafs, 
that Allah in it is not in need any of a place any to reside and Allah is not in need of a determiner mukhassis the one any who determines his existence or his uh, attributes this is any impossible so he mentioned he will not any be self sufficient and if Allah is in need any of a place any to to reside then he is not sufficient because he is in need any of something else any to to hang on a uh, determiner if Allah in is in need any of a mukhassis any meaning yani he is created because any the one any who who determines any your existence any meaning meaning any you are you are created and you are not any the creator if yani your your attributes any is being determined by yani is specified that you are like this and you are like that and you exist in a particular time and you uh what you call it exist any in a particular place all these things any are the attributes any contingent any beings because Allah any cannot be determined yani his existence and his attributes and his essence cannot be determined any by something else this is the meaning of determiner the mukhassis so is it, it is impossible if if Allah is determined any by a mukhassis the one any that specifies in his existence he will not any be self sufficient same thing negating self sufficiency from Allah the exalted is impossible because he has been affirmed for him both rationally and textually it shouldn't any be said that self sufficient means any the same as self sufficiency for how can something be proven any with itself there is a difference any basically author is saying there is a difference any between qiyamuhu bi nafsihi and al istirna in arabic any we call it difference between qiyamuhu bi nafsihi and al istirna when we say allah uh, the attribute of qiyamuhu bi nafsihi meaning allah is not in need of a locus and not in need of determiner only these two but when we speak about istirna it is more general and we say allah is not in need of everything else so one is specific the other one is general so they are not the same but mentioning a specific while speaking any about general meaning and is correct this one any he mentioned he say we say that self sufficiency is only exclusive to being free of needing a locus or determiner these are these are the two things his self sufficiency whereas self sufficiency is more general that's what i mentioned and freedom of needing all else besides him is more general and inclusive and using general and inclusive to prove the specific and exclusive is correct yani sometimes any you 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 use something that is general it is understood but yet any you speak about the specific meanings yani to emphasize so that people can understand better and there is no contradiction there is no there is no any contradiction yani when we say allah is not in need of everything else yani it it includes any being needing a locus in a determiner so when we speak about qiyamu bin nafs it only speaks any about allah is not in need of a locus and a determiner so it is specific whereas al istirna we say that allah is not in need of everything else so it includes the lo- uh, the locus and the end the determiner so speaking generally and also specifically any is correct any because the meaning the meaning any uh, is binded any together uh, with the general any meanings and the specific meanings his self and his uh, sufficiency necessitates his divine transcendence above imperfections and we say that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not possess any imperfections so this this also can be derived any from al istirna because the moment any we say allah any is not in need of everything else meaning allah is perfect correct or not the moment any you say god god any is not perfect any meaning he is in need any of something else to patch up any the shortcoming so by 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 saying that allah is not in need of everything else any meaning any he is perfect he possesses any all perfect attributes so we cannot uh, ascribe imperfections any to him were he not divinely transcendent above them he would be attributed with them if allah any is not perfect then it, it entails any that allah has attributes any of shortcomings and thus in need of one who can remove them from him remove any the shortcomings any from him if he has uh, imperfections being in need negate self sufficiency and negating self sufficiency from allah is impossible because he has been affirmed for him both rationally and textually so basically what the author is saying is that uh, the, uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect uh <clears throat> when we say that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect this also is under any the meaning of al istirna that allah is not in need of everything else if any he is not perfect what what happens meaning any he possess any shortcomings if he possess any shortcomings he is in need of something else any to patch up any the shortcomings so in that case he is in need of something else and this is impossible 
and being any in need is impossible for Allah rationally and rationally and textually. Included in the obligation of declaring his divine transcendence. Included in the obligation of declaring his divine and transcendence above imperfections is affirmation of hearing, sight, and speech for him. So part of it any is when we affirm that Allah yani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani he possesses the attribute of hearing, sight, and speech. So last time when we spoke about when we spoke about Al Ma'ani, when we mentioned that uh, Allah subhanahu wa the rational rational uh, uh, proofs behind uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sami' and Basir and Mutakallim is that we take any the opposite and if Allah yani, does not possess the attribute of hearing then what you call it he will will be ascribed in it to be someone uh, something any then that cannot hear and this is a shortcoming if he is not any ascribe uh, if he is not any uh, ascribe any to have possessing the attribute any of sight any meaning any he is blind if he does not have possessing any the attribute any of a speech any meaning he is he is dumb and all these are the impossibilities uh, when we when we take any the opposites any of this uh, these attributes so uh, by affirming hearing sight any and speech now this is uh, an indication any that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any is not any in need of other than him and if he is not uh, ascribe any with these attributes any meaning again as what we mentioned there is imperfections and he is in need of something else any to to patch up any the uh, shortcomings any that he that he has and that is impossible so we read any this again and he said included in the obligation of declaring his divine transcendence and above imperfections and if we say Allah is perfect is the affirmation of hearing sight and speech for him and the obligation of affirming that he is all hearing all seeing and that he speaks the existence of qualitative attributes necessitates the existence of predicative any attributes. This last time we spoke about uh, Sifat Ma'ani and Sifat Ma'nawiyah. So the moment any we speak about Sifat Ma'ani, automatically there is Sifat Ma'nawiyah. Because Sifat Ma'nawiyah is derived from Sifat Ma'ani. When we mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the attribute of uh, Al-Basar, yani he is Basir. If he has the attribute of uh, uh, Kalam, he is Mutakallim. So this is uh, the connection between the qualitative and the predicative attributes. And then and he mentioned, uh, notice here that there are 11 necessary attributes. So he said, notice here that there are 11 necessary attributes that are uh, subsumed under the meaning of self-sufficiency. So all these things that we mentioned under istirna, under self-sufficiency, there are 11 of them. So let us count again. So he mentioned here, which is the attribute of existence, is the attribute of wujud. So wujud, and we spoke about wajibul wujud. And then four negating attributes, that is al-qidam, al- al-baqa, mukhalafatul al-hawadith, and qiyamuhu bin nafs. So we have four attributes any from sifat and salbiya. Three are qualitative attributes, and sama, basar, and kalam, and three are predicative, that is uh, uh, sami' basir, and mutakallim. So altogether, how many we have? Yani we have any uh, eleven. If these attributes are affirmed, all of the opposites uh, are negated. So when we say Allah has no beginning, yani meaning having a beginning is negated. When we say Allah yani has no ending, meaning having an ending is negated. Because these are the opposites. Uh, opposites are negated. When we say Allah subhanahu wa taala is all hearing, yani not being able to hear is negated. Allah subhanahu wa taala is all seeing, yani to be blind is negated. So the moment any we affirm these attributes, automatically we negate the, the opposites. So the opposites are also 11. So because everyone and he has an opposite. If these 11 attributes were not necessary for him and were their opposites not negated, he would be in need of an originator. So this is the conclusion. So uh, any any of the attributes, any is, if it is not affirm, meaning any Allah any is contingent. Any of the eleven, as what we mentioned, no need for me any to repeat any again. But as what any I mentioned, all these eleven things any that we mentioned, the moment uh, a person any negates, the moment any any of the eleven, it would mean that Allah is in need any of an originator, any the one any who bring him into existence, because it will entail that he's part of contingent beings. And likewise, any the opposites, the opposite has to be negated. If the opposites are not any negated, likewise any it will bring. Contingency 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be in need any of an originator. The proof establishing the necessity of existence, pre-eternity, endlessness, absolute dissimilarity and con- uh, from contingent beings, and one of the meanings any of subsistence, which is being free from needing a determiner. Is that this, if these attributes were negated, he will be in need of an originator, as what we mentioned. It is impossible for him to be in need because it is rationally and textually established that he, the exalted, is self-sufficient. So again, this is the conclusion. If he was in need of a locus, now this is when we speak about qiyamuhu bin nafs, that Allah is not in need of a locus, the negation of which is the second meaning any of self-subsistence. What, what is any the meaning of sec, uh, second meaning of self-subsistence? Because self-subsistence has two meanings. Number one, is not in need of a locus. Number two, is not in need of a, a determiner, mukhassis. So if any we... Uh, if Allah is in need of a, uh, of a locus, now he gives an example, the negation any of which is the second any meaning any of self-subsistence, he will be in need any of one. Uh, he will be in need, he will be in need any of one, and being any in need, negate self-sufficiency. Yani, if we say that Allah is in need any of a locus, locus is basically any a place or a space, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need any of a place any to reside any, for example, now this negates him being self subsistence and self sufficient. Two things negates any him uh, being any self subsistent and self sufficient. Then he will be in need any of a locus and being in need negates self sufficiency. It is impossible to negate self sufficiency from him because it is both rationally and textually necessary. If it were Possible to negate self-sufficiency, it would be in uh, uh, he would be in need of one who can remove imperfections any from him. This proof any establishes the necessity of declaring any his divine transcendence any above imperfections. Uh, as what I, I mentioned any same same meaning as what we mentioned earlier, only expressed in different ways. Uh, the moment any we say that Allah is imperfect any meaning he is in need of something else any to patch up any then imperfection. An example of imperfection are the opposites of hearing, sight, and speech. Were he not divinely transcendent above their opposites, he will be in need any of one who can remove any of those imperfections. And if, for example, if uh, if any uh, we say that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, uh, does not uh, possess uh, hearing, any for example, any meaning he is deaf. So if Allah any is deaf, now Allah means that any meaning he is in need of something else any to make him hear. If Allah in need, uh, is unable any to see, He is in need of something else any to assist Him in, in, in seeing. If Allah in need, uh, is un, uh, unable, uh, does not possess any, uh, the attribute of speech, He is in need of something else any to, what you call it, to assist Him any in that. Were He not be divinely transcendent above the opposites, He will be in need of one who can remove those imperfections. And it's something else any to assist Him. And being any in need, in need any in this state, negates self-sufficiency and negating self-sufficiency from Allah is impossible because it has been affirmed for him both rationally and textually. So I go fast and because uh, as what I mentioned all these things I believe uh, what you call it, we have mentioned ma- many a times and this is just any some summary and the author is just any trying to relate any some of these meanings of the meaning of La ilaha illallah and the meaning of self-sufficiency so, so that it becomes any much clearer any for us. So inshallah any, I will just any continue a bit more. He mentioned it follows the necessity of his self-sufficiency, the sublime and the majestic that is divinely transcendent above motives and for his actions and judgments. So now when we go to the part any of the action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we spoke any about the entity of Allah, any meaning Allah is wajibul wujud, his existence. Uh, we spoke about the attributes, uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now any we're going to speak any about his actions. His actions. So he mentioned here that the actions any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot have motive. Cannot have motive. And meaning. Allah any does not create any a particular thing because he is in need of that particular thing, for example, or he is in need of something else from his creation of that particular thing. Yani, for example, Allah created human beings. It doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need any of human beings. So this is the meaning of motive. All this any we mentioned also last time. That we say that the actions any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are free from motives. Free from motives. Any he created any everything. Not because he is in need any of the things any that he created. Not because any that he is in need any of the things any that he is not in need of anything. His actions any does not any have a motive. This is the meaning. So the word motive is the plural of motive and in Arabic and you call it arad. 
which is the incentive and to look after what is advantageous and avert harms. So for example, our actions and it has a motive. For example, if a person asks you, why do you go to work? Why do you go to work? Yani we say that we go to work and it because at the end of the month any we are in need any of uh, money any for our financial any uh, expenditure for our house and so on and so forth. So we, we have any emotive any behind correct or not? Uh, we, we are in need uh, what you call it to eat any and drink. So our actions any has a motive any so, so that any we do not become hungry and thirsty. But the actions any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no motive. His actions any include bringing into being any creating things any into existence bringing into non-being yani making things any from non uh, from existence to non existence honoring abasing impover- impoverishing bringing life bringing death yani allah is one who honor allah is one who dishonor allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who bless allah the one the, the bringer of life and death his judgments are the five legal judgments the sacred law that is a wajib the sunnah haram makruh mubah these are the five these are the five ahkam shar'i or uh, uh, if it were permissible that he not be divinely transcendent above motives what will happen so he said in his action and judgment he will follow that he is in need of that which will fulfill yani, his motive yani, meaning yani, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, yani, does any something uh, that he be, because any of a motive yani, meaning yani, he is in need uh, he is in need of something to fulfill any debt, to fulfill any debt, that motive. So being any in need is impossible any for Allah. He will follow that he is in need any of that which will fulfill any his motive. We observe that all who have a motive for something need that which will fulfill their motive. Uh, will Allah be in need? He will negate his self-sufficiency. And basically what he's trying to say is that everything any that has any a motive any behind their actions and begin they are in need any of that, they are in need of that motive. The reason any why you eat any because you you are in need of fullness. Your reason why you go to work any because you are in need any of money. The reason why you you do a particular action because you are in need any of you are in need of something else. So basically, whenever you have a motive any meaning you are in need. So when when you are in need you are not self sufficient. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala cannot be in need. If Allah any will be in need, as what we mentioned, it is impossible for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So we are going to end here. Inshallah, this is this last any paragraph. Will Allah uh, be in need? He will negate his self-sufficiency, yet self-sufficiency is established for him, the exalted, both rationally and intellectually. So how can it be con- uh, conceived that he, the exalted, is in need when he is free from needing all things? Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah, our next lesson, yani, we will continue. We will continue uh, from here. So this is any part any of the meaning any of uh, his actions. Inshallah ta'ala, hopefully yani, we can uh, finish any yani, the kitab uh, before any yani, year end inshallah ta'ala. So let, let me see yani, if there is any questions any so far. So there is no question. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, we end any yani, our madlis by making dua. ربنا تقبل وعلى انك ان تسمع العليم وتب علينا انك انت تواب الرحيم واختم الصالحات وعملا واجر الله الكريم. Ifal Dismani Rabbika Bil Aizati Amma Yusifun wa Salaamun Alam Musaleen Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen InshaAllah this Saturday we are having a haul of Habib Muhammad Al-Haddaq uh, We have came out any with the posters So you can share any with uh, your contacts and InshaAllah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh